Welcome back. You are watching my Ear Miles, and I want to extend a warm welcome to all my new subscribers over the last week. Your support does help drive my motivation to continue creating these videos for you every Sunday. So today's video is all about how to fly an orbit using the Litchi app with a DJI drone that supports the DJI Go 4 app. This Litchi app does not support drones that use the DJI Fly app, such as the Mavic Mini and the Mavic Air. So your first question might be, why would I want a third party app to fly orbits around a point of interest, Miles? Well, I have found that the limitations in the DJI Go 4 app are as follows. The circle mode restricts you to 30 frames per second and quite often loses tracking with the point of interest about halfway around the circle, especially if lighting is not ideal. So the difference there is that the Litchi app, you actually give it a GPS coordinate to fly around, so it's not tracking the object as such, and it allows you to fly at 60 FPS. So for me, those are just two things that I just love. In addition to not losing tracking when you're flying around the object, or reducing my frame rate, I also have the option to have Litchi fly almost as a co-pilot for me. So Litchi is flying the orbit around the point of interest, but I still have control on the sticks. So what is the difficulty of flying an orbit and why would we want to automate that or hand off some of the work to a third party app? Well, if any of you have ever tried to do this, you will know that in order to fly a, a smooth orbit, what you're asking the drone to do is you're asking the drone to fly sideways, but at the same time, you're also asking it to make a turn, a yawing turn. So it has to fly sideways and yaw perfectly around your object. Now. The way that you would do that with the remote controller, but is that you would point one one way and the other stick the other way and you would balance those until you got the turn and the orbit in the correct desired rotation that you wanted. And then you have to lock your fingers in and not move them. Now part of the problem here is that then, well what if you want to widen the radius of the orbit? You, you can try and pull down on this stick. Um, and, and pull the drone back a bit as you're doing it, but now it's hard because you're probably going to lose that rotation angle. What if you want to climb? You know, that you, you know, you're trying to balance too many forces at any given time. So one of the benefits of using the Litchi app is that it will fly the orbit for you. And then all you have to do is control the radius, the height, and the gimbal pitch. So it's almost like having a co-pilot, yeah? The Litchi app will control the orbit around the object, and then you can say, okay, I want a wider orbit, I want a closer orbit, I want you to fly up a bit, down a bit, and I want to pitch the gimbal up and down. So you can focus on getting the perfect shot that you want, whilst Litchi is flying the perfect orbit for you, and you don't have to worry about your fingers slipping and getting a, a horrible pan shot. How does it look in the app? Well, first of all, when the app comes up, what's that? Oh, you'd like to see the app. Oh, sorry, okay, here we go. So what you can see in the app is when it boots up, it boots up in FPV mode. You want to change that by pressing the FPV and going to orbit mode. Now today's shots were all shot using the Litchi app and in New Brighton, England. So here, let me show you how to set up an orbit using Litchi. You zoom in on your point of interest. Now I know that we filmed a point of interest at the end of this pier. So we tap there and you get the blue camera point of interest marker. And you can see that this yellow orbit circle now. So that's telling me it's gonna fly an orbit around there. If I tap in again on the camera, a series of settings come up. Let's go through the settings. So the first option is altitude. And this is the height that the drone will ascend to as soon as you start the orbit mission. So if you're flying wherever you are, as soon as you start the orbit mission, it will ascend to this height. It will then fly to the point on the perimeter of the circumference that you tell it to fly to, and then it will fly around the orbit at whatever speed and direction you've told it to fly. And we'll go through those settings, but be sure that you don't set your altitude higher than you're allowed to fly in your region or country. The next is the radius. So the radius of an orbit is obviously the point from the middle, the outer point on the circumference. And you can scale that up and down pretty far. Um, I recommend not setting it to less than 50 unless you are doing orbits where you're not filming a point of interest, but say you're getting a landscape shot. So you want an external shot 
and you're taking a 360 of, say, the landscape, you might want to have a really small radius and then have the drone pointed outwards. But for most things, you're not allowed to fly closer than 50 meters to them. So I recommend setting a radius of at least 50 meters, but for safety, possibly 60 and above. So let's go for 65 in this case, right? And so that's our radius now. You will find that you probably will want to make that bigger because normally if you're flying quite low around an object, that even 60 meters away from it won't be far enough to capture the shot that you want. The third option is the speed. What speed do you want the drone to be flying around the orbit? And I normally set this as close to 60 seconds orbit as possible because a 60 second orbit means I can double the speed, half the speed, whatever, and it's not too much to, to try and compress in post-production. So instead of looking at the degrees per second, I look at the number of time in the middle, so seconds per revolution. And I then scroll this up until it's 60 seconds, or one minute. And that's how I set my orbits. And for me, I find that gives pretty good results. If you change the radius, you will have to come back and reset the speed. Let me show you that. If I bring the radius up, you can see that it's now said that the fastest it can go around that radius, based on the speed that the drone can do, is 3.7 degrees per second. And if I was to bring the radius down, you can see that it has kept at 3.7 degrees. I then have to drag it back up to set it to my one minute. So be careful. If you do change the radius of your orbit, then you are going to have to go ahead and reset the speed. Okay, so next we'll look at the entry point. This is where on the circumference of the radius you want the drone to enter into the point. So say you were setting up the drone 100 meters away and you wanted it to fly in to the east point of your, your orbit and then start flying the orbit. You can say, okay, drop this down and you can say east. And what that will do is it will set a course from wherever it is when you start the mission to the point at 090 degrees around the orbit and it will fly into the east point. Same for west, south and north, or you can just say nearest. So if you want it to just, you don't care where it joins the orbit, just get into the orbit as fast as possible and start doing it because you're gonna edit it in post anyway and you don't really care about the approach for your shot, then just select nearest. And that's what I've been using for most of the time. The next is heading mode. So this is where do you want the camera to be pointed when you're flying around your orbit? and you have some options here. So center points the camera to the center, and that's what we'll use for this first example, because we want the camera to be pointing right into the middle, because that's where our point of interest is. But as I said, if you wanted to fly an outward orbit so that you can get the landscape, I would set the radius quite small, say five meter radius, and I would then point the camera to outwards. So it will fly around a very small circle, but it's pointing outwards, so it's getting a very large landscape and I'd probably fly that a bit slower. You can have user controlled. So you can have the drone fly around the orbit, but then you can still completely control where the camera is pointed by using the yaw action on the controller, if you have user controlled. You can also have along the circle backwards. So if the drone is flying clockwise uh, around the orbit, let's go this way, clockwise around the orbit, then the camera is actually facing backwards. So the drone's going this way and the front of the drone is this way. So it's getting a backwards orbit around it. And there's also a long circle forwards. So again, it will sort of be turning with the drone as it goes around the orbit. Now we don't demonstrate all of these in today's shots, but it's nice to know that you've got those options. The next option is which direction around the orbit do you want the drone to fly? And so you've got two options, you've got clockwise and anti-clockwise. What you'll notice in my shots at the end of the video here is that I have them alternating. So the first one's clockwise, then it goes anti-clockwise, then it goes clockwise. I do that to try and prevent you from getting dizzy when you're watching my video. You can then set gimbal control. So if you want the drone to be focused at a certain height point on the ground, it can interpolate that angle. So if you tell the drone to fly 100 meters above the ground and you tell it that the point of interest is 50 meters above the ground, it can interpolate and get the correct gimbal angle for you. But I like to be in control of my gimbal. So what I find that I do is I leave the gimbal control turned off and I just use Litchi as a co-pilot. I just want it to fly the drone around the orbit for me at the height that I've asked and the speed that I've asked 
pointing the camera in the direction that I've asked, and I will then control the gimbal pitch. So that takes us through all the settings in the app. But things to note, and I, I can't demonstrate because I've, I've flown these flights now, but you'll see this in the first shot. So what you can do when you've set the mission to go, you can then use the right stick. If you pull back whilst it's flying the orbit, it will increase the radius. So it will start flying the drone back and continue around a, an orbit of that object, but it will increase the radius. And so that's quite cool. And if you point forward, then it'll fly inwards and decrease the radius. You can also have height control. So as it's flying, you can point up with the left stick and it will climb and you can pull down with the left stick and it will descend. Yeah. You also have some speed control. So when it's flying around the orbit, if you think it's going too fast or too slow, depending on which way you are telling the orbit to fly, you have left and right control, but not what it would normally do if you were flying the drone in manual mode. That controls the speed of the orbit as well. So you have some control there, and um, which is nice. And then obviously you've got the gimbal control in the top corner of the controller as well. So you can control the gimbal. So the Lucci app is a really great co-pilot in that sense. So it's gonna give you that smooth pan. It's gonna control all of those, you know, turn left and yaws at the same time or turn right and yaws at the same time. It's doing all of that for you and you can just focus on making sure that you're getting the point of interest you want in the shot, perfect, your gimbal is set correctly and you're getting those smooth shots. With that said, who would like to see some demos of how it looks when you have that running? Well, let's go ahead and hit start and hope that that magically turns this video into some previews and demonstrations of what you can do with the Litchi in orbit mode using the DJI Mavic Air. If you enjoy my videos guys, please do consider giving it a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. So the two choices for next week are Rivington and the surrounding area. This will include Winter Hill and Liverpool Castle. So if you thought last week's Litchi video didn't have enough Liverpool Castle content in it, then this is the video for you. I will put a lot more Liverpool Castle content in this video for you, including other things to see in the Rivington area. 
The second option is Fleetwood. I don't know if any of you watched me on my live streams in Fleetwood, but we did two of them. And there was some amazing video we got there, including jet skis, boat wreckages, and just great shots over the water. So let me know in the comments down below, do you want Rivington and the surrounding areas, or do you want Fleetwood for next week's video?